74, I'm going to the band. So I have a lot of time to go in the galaxy far away. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll try to answer this as best I can, okay? So, check it out. When you guys see our posters tomorrow, you're not going to see Carl on the poster. Oh, I hate to say that, oh, but Carl is helping us out out of the goodness of his heart. However, Carl started the band. So I know this is really confusing, but a long time ago in 2000, 2001, I can't remember quite exactly, Carl started it with like uh, another guitarist, a female lead singer, I was playing bass, I did not sing at the time, and I had no desire to sing. <laughs> Zero. And um, eventually we recruited on a keyboard player who is in, he's still a part of the band. So the key, he's on the poster. He's on the poster. Jonathan and he's, he's out in Texas right now. Jonathan Ho. And our regular guitarist, Danny, he is, uh, he's about to get married, so he's in the middle of house hunting, getting ready for getting married, and all that stuff. The hand clap really should be for Carl for helping us. Yeah, Carl! Because it would have been a three piece. I still would have come, but it would have only been the three of us. So. And I would have uh, maybe came. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I said if Carl came, I'll come. <laughs> the package deal. Yeah. Um, basically, so that's, that's over ten years ago. Um, many, many, many drummers later. <laughs> Many guitarists later, uh, even even with Chantal, like we we actually met at a camp uh, as counselors. We were both counselors for a children's camp. And, uh, make it pink. Yeah, make it pink. Purple. 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 So, yeah, she she kind of like. I heard her sing one time, I was like, oh yeah, she needs to be in the band. She needs to be in the band. She needs to be in the band. She's not just hot, she can sing good too. Oh! 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 I really can't stand trying to sing with you, though. It's too frustrating. <laughs> Your voice is too strange, it's too, like, different, and I can't harmonize with you. She was wrong. She was wrong! wrong. She was wrong! She was wrong. <laughs> Truth be told, I changed my voice quite a bit. Probably to... Show us the original. To use it. No. I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the original, just pick up a Creed album. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's like, pretty much like how the band started. Uh, oh. I can't figure out where the buttons are. We've only actually been in the Pacific in the Pacific. So, we've had, a, we've, we've had like three or four different band names. Oh, there we go. Uh, what was Carl's band? Okay, so when Carl uh, started, I think again was my original band. Okay, and then when he when you formed, when I joined with a seven, it went to ICQ. ICQ, yeah. So the letter. So it sounds ICQ. like I speak you. Uh, I get it. Ah, uh, I'm picking up what I put down there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, after that. Uh, was Unparalleled Addiction, which was our hardcore band that we wore spikes and painted our faces. Woo! <laughs> 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 Raymond no, but doesn't it sound like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you saw us back then. We were no different when we yeah. went under that name, and that was the problem. We, we, our, our style and our sound had changed so much over the years that it just didn't really fit. The band name, and then people just like, I think you guys, like we would ask people before they heard us, hey, what do you think, have you heard of us done now? Or what do you think we'll sound like? Yeah. Hard rock, metal, hardcore, uh, rapcore, we got it all, it's everything but indie rock. Like, so how did you come up with the name? Into how did we come up with the name? Okay. Great question. That is a good Thank question. Great question. So, yes. Actually, we named the band, and then I found that out afterwards. <laughs> that Pacific came from the word, uh, the Spanish word Pacifico, which means peace. 
So it kind of has a cool name. It just needs a, in, into the bee. Does it go? Like, but what we the reason that we named the band that is because we wanted to. Um, so you guys know when when uh, Jesus is on the cross and he says it's finished. Like, if you ever have time to like study a little bit about that everything that happened right there, and then and then that specific statement. Like the, the Greek word is tetelestai, which means like completion. Like it, it's it's kind of the all-consuming tour like, term that means like everything is done. Like it's all over with. Like Christ came with the mission to reconcile all of humanity back to God, and so he he's basically saying mission accomplished, game over, it's done. And like what what the the thing is that. There was a time where that, I don't think, I think God just opened my eyes a bit more to what that meant and what it entailed. And for me, personally, uh, it meant that my my efforts and my, my everything is actually not necessary to bringing about, I don't know, God's work on the earth. And this is hard to explain. Basically, it... it it's saying that Christ finished it, and now everything I do is out of that place of knowing that He's finished everything. Everything that I do, it's, it's not like there's a pressure on me. It's like knowing, in the song, um, uh, sorry, Hold Fast, we say like, the, the second verse is completely contrary to the first verse, if you ever listen to the words. Reason being is because the first verse represented uh, kind of my my own personal old mind state of like really being in the, um, I don't know, like almost like trying to win favor with God, trying to please God, even though I know I'm in relationship with Him and I know He's already pleased with me. I know that I don't need to do anything and I can't do anything to gain any more of His love or approval than He's already given. So... He's completed that. He's he's done the work of salvation. He's done the work of, re, of of redemption, and and I get I just get to enjoy that. And I'm just a messenger, like a news reporter, telling good news. Remember, good news implies past tense. It's it's something that's been done already. And so we were. I was so consumed with that at one point in time where I was like, absolutely wrecked me, changed my life, and I entered into a place of freedom that was all, always there, I just wasn't willing to walk into it because I didn't understand. And God was gracious enough to, to explain, to reveal himself even more. Did the whole band went through that as well, kind of all about the same time. So, if everything's done, and everything's completed, it doesn't, doesn't give me license to sit around and do nothing. It actually is the freedom to do everything in Christ. Like nothing's impossible. Absolutely nothing's impossible because he already completed everything. So there's no, it's like, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? You do everything. You do everything. So like, so completion. We weren't trying to copy Larry and his band, his name, meaning. <laughs> but uh, we thought about ideas of what what it looks like. And for us, since we've always lived on the West Coast, the end of a day looks like a sunset. That's the completion of every day. And it's kind of like a reminder to me every time I see the sunset of what Christ has done, what he accomplished on the cross, that I'm not trying to save the world. He saved it already. I just got I get to tell him about it. I get to I have the honor of like sharing this good news that God loves you like crazy. You don't need to do anything to win him over. Like he he's he's head over heels stupid in love with you. And so, stupid. yes. Ridiculous. Stupid. Ridiculous. 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 So, the sun goes into the Pacific when the day is over. That's so cool. For us. For us, for us it does. Nowhere else in the world, I don't know. But, but for us, that's, it's the time to come home. So, that was a little long explanation. But thank you for asking. Nope. Nope. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I was all over the place. All right. And you don't, it's all I don't good. have to be the only one talking. I'm sorry. I get excited. <laughs> it's good to get excited. I guess. <laughs> when I started off with uh, 
playing with Estella. I started off, uh, I was playing high school basketball at the time. And uh, in between basketball, I always was like, my church is drummer. My parents are pastors of the church, and my, my mom and my sisters were the worship team. And so I started off playing drums. I also play saxophone, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you bring that with? Yeah, bring, break that out. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you know? Sexy saxophone. Yeah. Sexy saxophone. Uh, <laughs> so, so Stubborn was kind of like, um, he had a couple of drummer friends. Stubborn? Huh? So he was one of those. So he would like ask me to play drums with him sometimes at different worship events and stuff. So I was still in high school at the time, and then um, also at one point in time, my sister, my sister sang in a band with this guy. Okay. And so we kind of all connected to that, and then. Uh, uh, then we were in a hip hop band, live hip hop band. Okay. And so, so that's kind of how we ended up with Larry. Larry, Larry. got in the mix with that. So me and Stephon were the drum and bass with Larry for a minute. And then, and I did two years of two years in the junior college and the community college. And after that, after that, I was just looking for which way I should go in life, and still figuring it out. And. Uh, that's why I gave him the option to come be his drummer and live in Hayward with him. And so, working. That's why I, that's why I have to go. I'm living, living off his farm. Off, off uh, playing drums for him, my friend, and my friends. And that's where we're at. We're going to see how far this guy the whole thing. Well, the thing is, I'll, I'll tell you, and, and no, 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 like, check this out. Like, there's, there's people who have played with us all through the last 10 years that I definitely had a sense that they were kind of, like, temporary immediately. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was telling Carl this, this is no secret, like, we... I, we have this feeling where it's one of those things like we're going to always be playing together whether or not it's like it could be these like terms of you know playing together and then we're not playing together for a while but I have this feeling like it's good to have those kind of friendships you know that like you can always come back to them and pick up right where you left off you know what I mean it's out it's more than this music like we want to I, don't, I wouldn't want to be like in a band with people that I can't stand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's just this. This is a close knit thing that we have. We live together. I would say that that's the hardest part of being in a band is learning to live with other people. It's not playing music. That's I mean, if you're decent at an instrument, that's the easy part. It's learning to live with all of us you know, all together. And, and all of our weird quirkiness, most of mine. <coughs> so, <laughs> but to answer your question, like this is we're we're pushing harder than we've ever pushed before. At this, like, I I don't have a this, music is full time for me. Music is full time for Chantal. Um, I'll let these guys talk about what they do outside of this too. But this is the thing right now. It's like we also have part time stuff too. I I was a teacher before. I decided to do this full time. I went to five years of college, including getting my credentials in California, which is ridiculous, and all to have God say, you know what, I want you right now to pursue music, and not much more direction other than that, just like music. Okay, what what what, what music? What, write? Uh, play like Covers? bars? Cover band? What <laughs> music? Not Not a lot of like... Not a lot of description, just a vision that I could look out ahead and, and move towards. So, um, this is what I plan to do. This is what I plan to do for life. So. And I'm lucky. I'm more than blessed to have a wife who believes in this, and, and jumped in on this vision. Like, because sometimes I feel like I dragged her into hell. Some some of these moments where things like we're like we don't know where. Our like next dollar is coming from, you know, like wh whatever, you know. Like, but we have a family, and we have a, a that's behind us that they are unwilling to see this fail. They're, like they're more, my parents are more headstrong about this than 
than sometimes we are. <laughs> we go back to them like, I don't know about this. Uh, you don't know about what? <laughs> you better turn around and go back and practice. <laughs> like, no, they're much more gentle than that. They listen. They were here last week, actually. They were like, oh, yeah. us on the road, and yeah. they were here last week. Yeah. And when we even toured on the other side of the country, like his mom would like fly out just to help us. And, wow. Um, they, yeah, they help us a lot. They're the best parents ever. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. they, they make, they're the, the background they of the whole thing. For me, I've been, uh, I moved to Hayward two years ago. It's been two years now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was blessed to have Larry, Larry got me in Starbucks. Like soon after I was in there, so I work at Starbucks, and uh, I do the early morning shifts. So I'm like 4:30 to whenever, and uh, it's crazy being a barista in the morning. And then uh, I had picked up a coaching job at the community college near the house, and so I was going from Starbucks to coach for three hours every day, and then the band at night. But um. It's just a blessing to play music with these guys. And, um, these past two years have been non-stop. It's like non-stop. Like, no sleep. <laughs> but it's, it's so good. We, we finished the album. Uh, how long did it take? Uh, we, we wrote most of it over last year. But it was in chunks. We never did it all at once because we toured five months out of last year. A lot of the songs came. A lot of our songs came out of worship. About about what four or five? Came four or five out. came in one month. Yeah, really fast. Yeah. Four. Yeah. And, uh, I'm glad these guys. We have this connection where when, when it's time to lock down and focus and, and get something done, you know how to get it done. And that's that's encouraging to to me to be on a team that is able to do that. Yeah. What do you do, Carl? <laughs> uh, currently, I'm a professional picture framer and graphics okay. designer, and I do um, like long run printing, offset printing, stuff like that. You guys see the banner? Yeah. Yeah, I printed the banner. What? I didn't design it. Larry designed it. Larry designed the banner. Larry. Yeah. Larry. Larry. Yeah. Larry. Yeah. Larry. Yeah. Larry. Also designed your album. Right. 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 You'll get to see all that tomorrow. Sorry. On the side, um, like off and on, I've done um, guitar lessons and bass and drum lessons, um, and then like instrument repair and things like that. A um, little bit of sound engineer, a little bit of national. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, I'd rather do something full time with music. I, I would be, I would take like pennies to do music full time, but I made choices in my life that had me tied down to a full time job, and you know, now that's changing without my choice because uh, I might not have a full time job when I come home. <laughs> so, yeah. this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, I, I don't try to sit. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I think, like, this is something I tried to say the other night, but I don't know if I communicated it well. Like, the idea of peace has been so key to us, at least me and Chantal, continuing in this. Because there's so much, there's so many ways for me to give up the peace that has been provided to me. Um, and, and... When when I read the Bible, I'm promised this peace beyond understanding, and like no one ever really really sat down and explained that to me. I just kind of assumed that it was this thing where, like all of a sudden I was going to enter this like this weird uh, I don't know what the words are <laughs> like some Zen Buddhist thing <laughs> like where just nothing like you could punch me in the face and do all these things and and but here's the crazy thing. Is I thought of it like God's God's given me this peace 
then this is part. This is this is a part true, uh, part partly true. Is that <laughs> I take this piece on, and other people will see the piece on me and be like, "Oh wow, look how he goes through the storms and and just doesn't you know doesn't waver in his faith and just like he has peace through it all. He doesn't worry. He doesn't freak out. He doesn't." You know, when the sound system busts like three times in the middle of a song, they don't freak mm-hmm. out. They don't, you know, all those things, right? But I heard someone, a pastor once explain, this, uh, a pastor up in Bethel and Reading, his name's Bill Johnson, and he said, the peace beyond understanding begins with me giving up my conceived right to understand everything. And I was floored. I was absolutely floored. Like, what do you mean? I don't get to understand everything. And like the next thing he followed that up with, he said, if it was the fact that you understood everything, then this wouldn't be called the faith anymore. It would be called the knowing. It would be called the understanding. And you will gain understanding along the way. But me saying I'm a man of faith already puts me in a position of not understanding everything. Of hoping in things that I don't see of having faith in things that I don't understand. And that's okay. That's, that is the mystery that is God and Jesus. And He's faithful to, to unveil different things about Himself along the way. That's the growth process. But like, if I can give up the right to understand like why, why we had to sell our car before we left to pay off a credit card, and that made me mad because I was like, God, this isn't right. Like I, we went and bought this car, and, and then we were kind of stupid with our money. So now I have to sell this thing to get to, to pay this off. And how come, you know, X Y Z? You can think of all the circumstances in life, but you can ask God why, why, what, what, is, why is this happening this way? And really, I came to a place where I'm like, you know what? I, I don't need to understand that. I understand that God's good. I understand that He's faithful. I understand that He did not set me up for failure. He has succeeded. He's won the war already. And I can rest in that place. Even if there's an absolute storm going on around me, Jesus set the example by sleeping in the bottom of the boat. He set the example. Like, that's what I get to do through the storm. Take a nap. You know? Like, when I don't know what's going on, it's okay. It's all right. So, that's why that, that what you brought up is really cool. Like, we found that out later that Pacific meant peace and I'm like, wow, into the peace. That's awesome. So, yeah. Ten minutes? Okay. What bands are you most excited about seeing and playing with? Okay. Super, really, like, the, I'm so, so, so excited about playing the Future of Forest Street. Which is not at Joshua Fest. Oh, at Joshua Fest. Yeah. So, Joshua Fest, I love those bands too. I want to go to Super Towns, really bad. Yeah. Um, I want to see MXPX because they're like an iconic band. Um, but we, not to downplay that, but like those are not those are not bands that I necessarily drew inspiration from. Future of Forestry, like that band has absolutely blown my brain. Like just listening and being inspired. And uh, we got on tour with them in September. And that was an absolute God thing because we don't know them, we don't have any connection to them, all we do is like them a lot. And we wrote an email to them saying, how do you guys take bands? And all he wrote back was, uh, we'll let you know if we're considering you guys. And eventually they put out a, a, a Facebook post saying, we're looking for bands. And we applied. And about 150 emails later, they accepted us. <laughs> Literally. Lots of emails back and forth. Just question and answer, question and answer. So it was like, well, if you guys are in, I'm in. Awesome. So it's super exciting. September 6th and 7th are the only Bay Area shows. September 7th, right? Uh, the Modesto show. September 6th is in Hayward, and September 7th is Modesto. And if you find us on Facebook, we'll be posting all of this stuff regularly. So. Hayward's $10. Into the Pacific on Facebook. Yep. Twitter? Twitter too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the same as our Facebook post. Okay. Yeah. Because we would forget, so we just wanted to get on that. 
Yeah. Any other questions? Or, yeah. You guys mentioned, uh, I guess, friends of yours wrote a couple of songs that you guys were playing. Yes. Um, who writes the majority of your guys' songs? Uh, myself and the keyboard player, uh, Jonathan. We we sit down and write a lot of the, the, the basic, like, the meat of the songs, basically. Like, I, I, I like to write from piano, because that was my first instrument. And I often like to write music and just record it and leave it, put it aside. And then lyrics come and I'll write them down, but I don't necessarily know what they go to. So it just kind of happens that a set of lyrics will fit music and I will put it together and then tweak things a little bit, whether it be lyrics or music, and make it fit. But I really, um, I really have a problem with music that sounds like it's divorced from the lyrics. And I can't explain that, it takes a long time. But like, I guess the easiest example would be like, no, 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 no. Okay, I'll tell you who does it a lot. Maroon 5 does it a lot. And I love them. Like they can make the happiest, sickest sounding like dance song. And it's totally about his girlfriend cheating on him and he's gonna go kill the guy. Like literally kill the guy. The song's about going to shoot him, and I and so the lyrics are completely divorced from from the music to me, from the sound, so it's like from the feel of the song. So like, I, if I was to write a song of that content, it would sound very different. It would sound a lot sadder, a lot more deep sounding. But that's me. That's the way. They, they need to write pop radio days. That's that's all. They're controlled by a label, so. Um, yeah. And Jonathan, he's just, I wish he was here so you guys could meet him. He might not talk to you much, but, but he's just a genius. Like, he, he, he's an absolute musical genius. He can play anything he puts his hands on. It's scary. Like, how fast he picks things up. He would be here rocking the accordion with us, which he only picked up in the last year. Maybe two, yeah. What's your favorite song that you wrote? Favorite song that we wrote? That's really hard. Um, uh, uh, Jonathan actually wrote that song for the most part. Yeah, I, I was shocked because like he sang it for me and everything, and I've never heard him sing. And he's like, I got this song, man. And he busts down with that is amazing. Wow. So he, he actually did that whole thing on his own. And we just filled in. He also wrote all of you. Yeah. The song oh, that we really? were singing, he wrote all of you. He wrote pretty much start to finish. We just worked in the percussion parts and all that around. Him. So, um, yeah, it's hard to say what's a favorite, though. Like, I really like um, uh, From the Start. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorites for sure. Um, and there's another song that we don't that we don't perform. It's on the album, and it's called uh, Loose Ends. And that song was, was really special too. Like I, I uh, threw my favorite in the wind. In the wind is a good song. Too. We played it. We played it at the show this week. This week, the first day. Yeah. We have, we don't we haven't we don't perform it. Um, it it's, I feel uncomfortable. It's my own fault. It's not because <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like the song, it's a it's an extremely vulnerable song for me. Like uh, and it and it was like God gave me the song to sing from his perspective and that freaked me out like i didn't i don't like to write songs that sing from the perspective of god to man i like to sing from my my normal position as a man here on earth and uh and so that was really awkward for me it's funny thing is we've gotten a lot of feedback about the album as a whole and that's a lot of people say the song really so, I have a question. Yeah. Um, who wrote Sing My Love? That is it's not something Sarah Mc Sarah McMillan. Sarah McMillan. But I don't know about her version, but if you find 
Um, there's a Jesus Jesus culture. Have you ever heard of them? Yeah. Okay. Their version of that song is amazing. It's very close to what we're doing. Okay. They're but but they're definitely their production is over the top. When it comes to worship, we, we do some praise songs and our songs. And but when it comes to like when we do our concerts, we definitely do our own songs. We do our own songs. But like you heard songs from um, like the. The split my chest. Yeah. That's, a, that's a friend that we toured with all last year. His name's Benjamin Dunn. Okay. And then the uh, how we love. How we love uh, that's, that's, okay. Yeah. Um, have you written music before, Sean Paul? Do you like partake in that or? I have written stuff. Um, I'm not like huge on it. It's one of those things that it kind of just. I won't like actually take the time to do it. And it just if it comes, then I'll write it down. Um, it's been a while since I've actually written a full song. Or actually, that's not true because I wrote the whole thing secret. What did you write? I wrote him a song for Christmas. Oh, sing it. Nope. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. <laughs> that song was for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no purple here. Oh. No purple. When you get married, yay! Yeah. 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 song for your wife. Oh, you win! Send that song to my wife to sing. But recently, like usually, what happens is I'll just like some. It's like something happens and I'll just like write the song and then I'll just like do it like that. And songwriting or anything like that, like, always take yeah. notes. Like, always. he even put um, the flash of light, lightning strike. He, he put that in yeah. to, from, from, from the start. start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even little yeah. things like that, like, he well, can we could go for catch. Mm. So. So just, okay. Get inspiration yeah. from everything. Yeah. Just like you already do. All your jokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like that. Yeah. Same thing. Anywhere. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just always, like, always write it down. Anything you get to write But it came together in about yeah. an hour. <laughs> right, in an hour. And so um, things like that happen, you know. And, but I, I'm not like the type to really take the time to do it. But, yeah. but I'll never say I won't ever do it. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's not your main thing. Right. What? what? Oh. Go for I'll need to grow your hair, bro. Um, I've been getting really bored with it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So, like, I got my clippers here. I got my clippers here. Well, yeah, last time I got a haircut was July 4th, 2004. And I only remember that because I cut it into a mohawk. So I had a blue mohawk for a long, long time. And then it got to shoulder length, and once it got to shoulder length, I was like, well, I want to grow it so I can donate it. And then time has just gone on. I can pretty much donate twice. <laughs> and um, this is actually, like a lot of people, you've heard of Locks of Love. Mm -hmm. Another organization that actually donates more to like cancer patients would be Wigs for Kids. Mm -hmm. um, Locks of Love, they do, but they also um, give hair to kids with like alopecia, um, and other things that aren't revolved around cancer and for me there's been a lot of deaths in my family revolved around cancer including my mom so it feels more honoring to her if I could somehow donate my like if I could somehow get a wig made and give it to a kid with cancer then it would make my day so that's kind of on my bucket list right now is make a wig give it to a kid with cancer and hopefully they make it through it you do? Yeah. I thought about that, but he looked like Pink Pin, you know? So I, like, yeah, I don't think a girl would want to have, like, scraggly hair. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. You know? uh, give it to a little boy, and he'll never have facial hair. Unfortunately, I think we have to uh, yeah. put all this stuff away, but, dude, thank you guys so much. Yeah.